Here's some code in Rust that uses generics in traits and also generics in the implementations of those traits. In this video, we're going to cover how this works so that anybody, no matter how much experience you have with Rust, will be able to understand what's going on. I have two binaries here in source bin. One is called small and one is called trait. We're going to spend most of our time in the trait.rs file, which you can run using cargo by running cargo run dash dash bin trait. The same goes for the small binary. Each of these files has a main function, which is the entry point to our Rust application. The point of both of these programs overall is to detect whether a list has a sublist inside of it. So if we look here, we have a vec of say 10 integers and we have a prefix of 345. The goal is to determine whether 345 exists in this list. Now, before we get into the actual generics, I do want to point out that if I was going to write this functionality, I wouldn't necessarily use traits and generics to do it. If we look at small.rs, we've got our main function. And if we run the small binary, we see the result is true. The small program has a vec of 10 numbers, just like we saw before. These values we iterate over with windows, with a window size of four. This means that we will get an iterator of one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six as each item. So because we have an iterator over windows of four, we can use the find function on iterators to take that window and compare it to a slice. In this case, we're looking for the slice three, four, five, six. If the subslice three, four, five, six exists inside of this values vec, find will return an enum called option, which will either be sum or none. If it's sum, then result will be a Boolean and will return true. I can bring up the additional types here with the type inlays, which will show you actually how the types flow through this application. So values is a vec of i32s, which are integers, 32-bit integers. We take values and we turn it into this struct that says windows of i32. Windows implements the iterator trait, which is why we can call this an iterator. And I won't dive too deep into what that means, except to say that what this does is creates windows of four items overlapping as we go through this vec. So like I said before, the first item we see is a slice of one, two, three, four. The second item we see is a slice of two, three, four, five, and so on until we hit the end. So windows gives us an iterator over these slices. If we run find on those windows, we get a reference to those slices, which is why we see a double reference here. We get a reference, which is the first one, to a slice. And we can compare that slice to another slice. In this case, it's a hard-coded slice that we came up with, but it could be a slice that came in from a function call, an argument, something like that. Now for this code in particular, it is useful to understand what a slice is. A slice is a view into some other sequence. So for example, if we look at the docs here, we have a vec, this vec has one, two, three in it. This is range syntax for the entire range basically. So this is a slice that looks at the whole vec. So this slice will have one, two, three in it as well, but they will be looking into the vec which owns that data. So in this case, when we get slices, this window is going to be a view into the vec for each of these items. The vec still owns that data. We're just borrowing it to look at it. So small.rs shows maybe how I would write this code in a regular application. But let's say, for example, that we want to write a trait that implements this has prefix function. Here we have two examples of how we would use such a function. We have a vec of integers on top and a vec of floats on the bottom. We take the integers as a slice, so we are looking at that vec, and then we call the function has prefix on that slice, and we look for some given prefix. So in this case, we're looking for three, four, five, which does exist which we can see returns true. And in this case, we're looking for 420 and 5.0, which doesn't exist in this vec of floats. So we'll get false. The important point to note here, other than the fact that we're dealing with slices, is that this has prefix function works for both a vec of integers and a vec of floats. That's where generics are coming in for us. There's nothing to say that we couldn't have implemented this trait for both vecs of integers and for vex of floats, but we didn't. The way we implemented this trait is for slices of some type T that implement partial equality. So let's start digging into what that means. We have this prefix trait. It's a completely made up trait. It doesn't exist anywhere else. We just chose the name prefix and we decided to use it. If you're unfamiliar with the term trait, you can think of them as interfaces in other languages. So this trait defines a function that has to be implemented called has prefix. Has prefix takes a reference to self. This is why we can call has prefix on the slice itself, because once we have this slice, this reference to self is the slice. 
and the has prefix argument that we see here is going to be this prefix argument right here, which is a slice of t. So it's a view into some list of items t. We have to define the generic that we're using inside of this trait. So in this case, we're using t. And what this is saying is basically we have some trait for which we have some generic type t that we're using to define the type of this prefix argument. This has prefix function has to return a Boolean, which is why we get float result as false and integer result as true. So once we say that there is a trait we can implement for some type, we have to actually implement it for a type in general. If we don't implement it, we'll never be able to use this has prefix function. The way we've decided to implement it is by using more generics. So we have a generic in this prefix here that basically passes through some type to be the argument of this function. And when we go to implement this trait, so we're implementing prefix t, this is the same thing we wrote up here, for some type slice of t's. And when we write our implementation, we're also using a generic. And we're using this generic to say that the type that we're using inside of prefix, so this t, the type inside of this slice argument, and the type inside of this slice that we're implementing it for are the same type. It doesn't particularly matter to us as the implementers of this trait, what type that is actually. So that means it can be integers like we saw up here, or floats, or in fact, anything that implements the partial equality trait. And that's what this syntax means. So we have an implementation of prefix for a slice where the items inside of the slice are of type T, where the items themselves implement partial equality. So what that means is that we can use a double equal sign to do an equality check on the items of type T. So if you have a T on the left and a T on the right and you'd use equals equals in between them, that works. That's all that means. Then we have to actually implement the function has prefix. So we've tied these types together using this generic. We have some generic T, we pass through that generic to the prefix trait basically. So this prefix argument is also the same T that we're implementing the trait for here. So when we run function has prefix, we can use that T again. So and self here refers specifically to the type that we're implementing this trait for. So and self is going to be a reference to a slice of t's because we wrote it here because we're implementing for that slice of t's. The prefix type is defined separately. We've also defined it as being a slice of t's. But theoretically, we could have defined it as something else. So this reference to self is a slice of t's. This prefix is also a slice of t's. And the t's implement partial equality. This function, of course, at some point has to return a Boolean. And then we can get into the body of our function. So at this point, the only thing we know about the type inside of the slice is that it implements partial equality. That's kind of why we're using generics here. We're implementing this trait for any type that implements partial equality. So a reference to self is going to be this slice, which we can iterate over. So if we have a slice that looks at a number of items in say a VEC or something like that, you could say, I want to iterate over the items that I'm looking at. If you have a slice that is looking at the items three, four, five, six, you can iterate over three, four, five, six without iterating over this whole VEC. So we iterate over the items in self. We use a function called dot positions, which actually comes from the iter tools crate. Looking at the positions function definition, it returns an iterator adapter, which basically just means we can keep iterating. That yields the indexes of all the elements satisfying a predicate counted from the start of the iterator. So if we use positions, for example, and we want to get all of the even numbers, so in this case, it's v mod two equals zero is how we tell whether it's even or odd. Then we can look at this vec that we're iterating over in this example, and we can say, okay, if this is index zero, then we should get index one, not two, not three, but we should get four, we should get five, and then not six or seven. So on the thing that we're iterating over, we can call positions. We can write a function to basically filter out the values that we don't want from the values that we do want. And then that will give us only the values that we want moving forward through the iterator. And specifically and importantly, it will give us the index of the items that we've passed. So in this case, we've got positions. If I bring up the type inlays, we can see that V is a reference to a T. So it's one of the items from the self slice. And then we've got prefix. So if we're looking for a subslice, you can imagine that if we're iterating through self for each item, the first item in the prefix has to match that item for it to even be possible for there to be a full slice match. There's this star operator here, which is dereferencing V. If I remove that and we try to run the trait binary, we get can't compare a reference to T with a T. 
no implementation for a reference to t equals t. So what we're getting from prefix zero, when we index into the zeroth element of the prefix, we're getting a t, whatever that type is. And on the left-hand side, when we run positions, because we're iterating over this with iter, we're getting references into that slice. So v is a reference to some t that lives somewhere else. So we have two different ways to solve this. We can either reference the value that we're getting from prefix, or we can dereference the shared reference that we're getting from positions. Both options work. It's kind of just a matter of taste. And because these are both t's, and we've specified that t has to implement partial equality, we have the ability to run an equality check here. If the item that we're looking at matches the first element in the prefix that we've passed in, then pass that item further along this iterator. And if it doesn't match, if they're not the same, then that can't possibly be the start of the prefix. So don't pass it through. So at the end of positions, before we get to find, find is going to get the index of all of the items that match the first element of the prefix we passed in. So we're iterating over the slice that we have called the function on. We're checking to see which of the items in our self slice match the first element of the prefix. And then we're forwarding the indexes of those positions. So we get an index here. Rust has a concept called a range. So we can build a range from the index of the character or number or whatever we're given, whatever T where we matched on, we get the index of that. Then we do dot dot, and then we can have another number. In this case, the size of this range is going to be the size of the prefix. So we start at index and we end at index plus the size of the prefix. So if the index is five and the size of the prefix is four, five, six, seven, eight, and then this number will be nine. So we'll go from five to nine, non-inclusive. So we don't include nine. Once we have this range, which you can see is a real type. So it's capital R range. We can use that range to get a slice of the slice that we called this on. So because the items T have partial equality implemented for them. If we get a slice out of the original slice that we call the function on, we can compare that to the prefix. And this will tell us whether this slice is equal to that slice. And thus we know whether the prefix exists for this character at this position in our original slice. Now we have another one of those dereference operators here, and we have another ampersand here that we didn't cover. If I show you the type of index, it's a reference to a U size. So positions gives us a U size and find takes a reference to the items in the iterator. So positions gives us that U size. That's an index. It's a number and find will reference the items in the iterator that is given. In this case, it happens to be a U size. So index is a reference to that index that we've passed through from positions. But if we run this, we can see we have some type errors. So we have a suggestion here, but what I've chosen to do is destructure that reference. So index then is just going to be a U size now because we've effectively destructured that shared reference that find is giving us off of the argument of the function. That means that our range is a range of U sizes, and that's what we need to pass in to get the slice here. Now, if we look at the type, so I've changed the code a little bit. I've taken self range and I've put it in a variable so that we can see the type of it very clearly. If we take a range of self, what we get back is this slice, right? No shared reference. But we know from the type of our function that prefix is a shared reference to that slice. So if we take self range, which is just the brackets with the T in it, and we try to compare it to a shared reference of the brackets with the T in it, we don't get to do that. And if I remove the star operator here, the dereference operator, and we run the trade again, we can see that we're not allowed to do that. We can't compare something with a type of a slice of T with a shared reference to a slice of T. So again, we have two options. We can either put a shared reference on the slice that we're getting out of self, or we can dereference the prefix. So we can either take this ampersand and we can add it to the start of this type, or we can take this ampersand away from the type on the right. So we basically compared all of the potential places that we could have this subslice to the actual full subslice. Find then will return an option type. So if we look at the documentation, we can see that find operates on self, which is the iterator with some predicate, which is a fancy word for a test. And it returns this option with a type of self item inside of it. Self item is just the items that we're iterating over. So this is going to be an option in our case, if I change the code here, it makes it a little bit more obvious, but it's going to be an option of U sizes because we iterated over self. We got the indexes using positions. 
We did a find on the indexes. This returned a Boolean for whether that index was the correct index or not. But in our case, we don't care about that index in the end. We only care about whether the subslice exists or not. So in this case, I've chosen to use the function is sum, where is sum is a function on options. So we can say x is sum. If it's sum with a value inside of it, then this is going to be true. If it's none, then it's going to be false. And this option type can either be sum with a value or it can be none. There are no other options. So using generics, we've taken the type that we want to implement for. We've tied it to needing to implement partial equality so that we can do this equality check. But otherwise, we've left it open to anything. We've made sure that this generic type is the type we're using for all of our arguments, as well as the type that we're implementing for. And what this means is that as long as we have a slice into a list of the same type that we're checking the sublist against, we can use this for any of those types that implement partial equality. So you can imagine one equal equal two being a valid operation, even though it'll be false. 4.0 equal equal 4.0 also works for float. So we automatically, because we've implemented this trait generically, we get implementations for anything that implements partial equality. And that's the power of generics. We could have written an individual implementation for U32s and U8s and U sizes and F32s and F64s, but we don't need to because we aren't using any of that functionality in our implementation. The only functionality we need from this type T inside of this container slice is the fact that it implements partial equality. And if that's all we rely on and we let Rust and the compiler know that's all we're going to rely on, we automatically get this implementation that we've given across all of these different types that already implement partial equality for us. Now, there's one more thing that I wanna say. We used as slice here. So we did integers as slice. I did this for clarity because it can be a little confusing, but we could also do a shared reference to that integers vec with all of the items in the vec using this kind of infinite range syntax. If I split this out, it's a little bit easier to see. I've defined this variable i slice that we can call has prefix on, and we've taken a slice of integers. In this case, we've taken the whole slice. And if we look at the types, we can see that i slice is a reference to a slice of i32s. So as slice does the same thing as this sort of grab everything syntax. So we could theoretically, if we wanted to, let's see, we're looking for three, four, five here. So that'll be index zero, one, two. So let's start at index three, right? If we start at index three and we run this with the index at three to the end of the slice, so we get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then integer result is false because it doesn't include three, four, five anymore because we've taken a view of this part of the VEC and we've called has prefix on that part of the VEC. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment. This is not really, again, a trait that you would implement normally. I used it as an example to sort of show how you could use generics to implement something like this generically. If I was going to write this code as part of my application, I might use something like Windows because that doesn't require, you know, implementing a whole trait and doing a whole bunch of things. But there are other situations in which generics are useful. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great rest of your day.